Hey everybody, Peter Zion here, coming to you from Colorado's Lost Wilderness. You've got uh, Colorado's very own Stonehenge there behind me, and the uh, Mosquito Range of Colorado just behind that, uh, where I'm going to be the next few days. Anyway, today we're going to talk about a new little factoid that boiled up as I was on my way out here. Youth unemployment in China is now higher in percentage terms than it is in Italy. Italy being probably the most moribund economy in Europe and generally the one with the worst economic profile. Average economic growth out of Italy has averaged over the last 20 years. Jian Jian and Wu Yuanhao are part of the millions of young people out of. Because that's really where this all hits. Number one, everyone's reshoring. Investment is flowing out of the country. Even Chinese companies are moving. So that is a huge hit to the engineering model. And the manufacturing model, because if you have a huge amount of unemployment, because number two, young people in China don't want to work in manufacturing. They want to work in information technology jobs. They want to work in the knowledge economy. But that brings us to the third problem: is that China sucks at those things. One of the simple knowledge-based economy is you have to allow your people to think. And sort of independent discourse on anything, and it's now reached to the point that foreigners can't even access economic data, like weather data. Uh, you cannot possibly train up a mass employment system where everyone is capable of value-added knowledge work. So more and more people don't want to do the manufacturing work. At the same time, more and more foreigners don't want to do the manufacturing work in China. At the same time, that the labor force is no longer right-skilled for what the Chinese are actually decent at. And I would argue that the Chinese aren't even all that decent at manufacturing anymore because the cost of labor keeps going up. Remember, this is a country that is in a demographic bomb. Okay, so that kind of all of that is phase one. Phase two is that you should expect all of this to get significantly worse with no chance of getting better. Uh, Chairman Xi has created a cult of personality that is one of the strictest in human history. He absolutely has more power into his person than any Chinese leader in history, and arguably even more than, say, the Roman empires of old. You've got a population that doesn't want to do the work that their economy is designed for and that their infrastructure is designed for, and Xi is ensuring that the labor force will never be able to evolve in a more productive direction that is more value-added and more knowledge-based. This is just what the Chinese system happens to look like now. But third, and perhaps most importantly, and maybe a little sexy, is the last time the Chinese had this sort of disconnect between labor quality and the economic structure of the economy overall. You had a lot of very young people who thought they were going the into need the for blue collar workers. There's a lot at stake when it comes to correcting these imbalances, given how important the youth population is to China's protests. economy. Now, Rising China, joblessness uh, means less income for young people, of course, that means less spending on things like education, travel, mobile phones, which means less economic output. Young people are important to consumers in the economy, especially in the luxury market. Frustrated by mounting uncertainties, young people are turning to different career paths to secure an income. We've seen an uptick in people interested in taking the civil service examinations in pursuit of this so-called iron rice bowl or job security. There have also been new additions to the lexicon, such as lying flat, where young people are opting out of the rat race, or an escalation of that in letting it rot. This? when this you is embrace a, uh, sort of I've giving up. And the that this is going to be the last decade of the Chinese system. But the degree of narcissistic myopia that we are seeing out of Beijing really has gotten to just massive levels. And now that we're having massive disconnects within the employment system, it's only a matter of time before that translates into massive disconnects in the economic system as a whole, and that cannot happen without a political effort. I don't want to suggest that this is the end, but this is how ends begin.